Welcome back to Outdoor Exploration. I decided today, since we have had some nice frosts finally, um, and even almost kind of a deep freeze where it got to about minus eight overnight, um, that was a week or two ago, but uh, that changes some things in the forest. So I thought we'd come exploring around the lake here and find some winter fruits. Um, specifically because the rose hips get ready at this time of year. But the first thing I found on my little walk is snowberries. They're not edible, but they're sure beautiful. They're all over pretty much the whole province, if not maybe even up north, I'm not sure. But, uh, but down here, they're everywhere this time of year and you can see them, you know, brightening up the trails. And when I was a kid, we used to call them pop berries and I'm going to show you why. So, they're basically spongy inside, so um, you can pop them. Here's how it goes. Did you hear it? And then you can, once they're popped, you can spe see the little sponge inside them, which is, it's a bit, it's a bit goopy and damp, but this sponge is the reason that they pop, because basically it's, it's holding and trapping a bunch of air inside there with the berry flesh. So when you pop it, it pops like a balloon. Uh, yeah, pop berries, more commonly known as snow berries. Um, let's go for a walk and hopefully find some rose hips. Whoa, did you see that? I was coming here to see the ducks out there. I can't even tell what they are from here, but uh, there had been what I think were some coots back there. But anyway, as, as I came up here, the heron flew up out of the grass. I had no idea he was there until he exploded onto the scene. And this has nothing to do with winter fruit. Um, but, you know, there are always such lovely things to discover. And here at the lake, there seem to be a bunch of winter birds appearing, so. That's pretty, pretty awesome to me. Okay, let's go keep looking for the rose hips. <laughs> oh, here, finally, uh, at least one single rose hip on all these bushes. There don't seem to be a whole lot, um, but it's enough to show you anyway. I'm pretty sure this is a bald hip rose. They have the tiny hips and also small flowers in the spring. Um, and a rose is actually related to apples. So it's not a berry, it's a fruit like an apple, which is why when you cut it open, they have all the seeds inside like an apple. And the seeds actually, they're kind of hairy and they can, they can bother you if you eat them. So there were various ways to prepare rose hips to deal with that and still get the amazing vitamin C out of them and the flavor. And so that's my plan for today. Um, I'm not going to pick this one because it would be nice if other people can see the single rose hip on the trail here. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, let's, let's head home where I have some wild roses growing in my garden that are of a different variety, not the bald hip, adorably tiny bald hip roses that we have here at the lake. And, uh, and we'll see what we can make of them today. So back in my own yard, um, I have this wonderful, gorgeous rose bush that my partner actually gave me as a gift from the interior where my parents used to live at the time. And I'm not actually, oops, I'm dropping some hips. I'm not sure what kind of rose this is. It was growing wild in the interior. And as you can see, we not only got the frost that is required to sweeten up the hips before you eat them, but we got a pretty hard freeze. It was like minus eight for a couple of nights and it actually killed a lot of them or not killed them, but destroyed their structure and caused them to rot. So a lot of the hips aren't great right here right now, but lots of them still are. So I'll have my dainty little basket and I'm going to pick a whole lot of my own rose hips. I thought at one point that this might have been a Nootka rose, but 
I'm not sure. There are a few different species of rose here, and the bald hip is easy to identify because it's so tiny and uh, kind of delicate looking. But this gargantuan thing must be about three meters tall and gets these long pointier hips on it. Uh, Nutka rose should have rounder uh, hips, so really I don't know. Anyway, give me a moment here. An interesting thing about rose hips, I'll show you on this one that's obviously been frozen a little too much. Um, if you, I'm just going to use my fingernails here, but if you break them open after a freeze, but when they're still not frozen solid, um, you can see inside they have the, the fleshy part and then all the seeds in the middle. And so here the, the part that's rotting is just here on the edge, but before it rots it actually gets squishy. So this only has a tiny bit, but just under the peel, it's starting to get a bit soft. And I'm not going to eat the, the rotten part, but you can actually nibble at that. And where it's soft, it's kind of sweet. It's almost like, it's sometimes in the interior I find after it freezes, you can actually squish the, the soft flesh out from the rose hips. And uh, I think that's called bletted when, when that's happened, but the, the, the flesh has become all squishy. And it's kind of like rose hip jam. Just, well, not kind of, it basically is rose hip jam developing its own sugars inside the hips. And yeah, awesome. But we are cooking these because we don't get the kind of freezing that we would need to do that right off the tree. And besides, it's really finicky to try and harvest all the the squishy flesh from inside each one although it's amazing amazing to do that but we're going the easy route here i'm gonna try and get a good amount of the best rose hips into my basket and see what we can cook so come back in a few minutes or for you in the magical world of video more like half a second and I will have filled this basket or almost filled it okay so I have picked all these and um, I'll bring those in for making some stuff but I also found a bletted rose hip so if you look here I can actually see that it's bletted from this side because it's kind of exploded at the back so I see little bits of the skin hanging down and if I pick it I'll be able to squeeze out the bletted rose hip mush, which will be sweet and wonderful, like nature made rose hip jam, like that. Mmm. Yum. Bletted rose hips. So, um, I'm going to take all those non-bletted ones I've picked inside and uh, see what we make. See you in a second. Oh, hi. Um, so we're inside my kitchen now uh, and I am going to make some basically rose hip infusion, but it's uh, it's going to cook down into a soup. So I just start some water cooking. And this is actually something I've never made before. My uh, mother-in-law just mentioned it to me and uh, it's so exciting. I've made rose hip jam and jelly and syrup. That's the best. Awesome. You can eat it on snow for snow cones in the winter. Um, and rose hip soup turns out to be pretty much the same thing. Um, well, the same as the syrup, sort of, but in, in, a, in a less sweet, more soupy thing. Um, and, and then today, just today, my Auntie Lydia was telling me that uh, it's a Hungarian thing, apparently, to eat fruit soups, dessert soups. 
And so yeah, this is interesting and exciting and I'm going to try it. Um, I'm also going to include a recipe for this, which is unbelievably simple and you're going to see it right here in the book I'm making for, it's like a, it's called Wild Art Through the Year. It's all activities that kind of take you through the year. And this is truly one of my favorite November activities. So processing rose hips. <laughs> so the reason we, or the reason I don't make jam is because in order to make jam, you would have to, here, I'll take a big one, cut them up. You don't want to eat the seeds because the seeds, if you look in the middle, are most of the actual fruit and they are, um, the, you can kind of see they're hairy and they, uh, they bother your stomach. They make, they even, they bother my mouth. I wouldn't eat them at all. So if you want to make jam, what you have to do is, it's harder with this. I should have used a little butter knife, but you need to hook out all of the seeds and use only the fruit part. My finger works better than that knife. So you're left with that. And it's just so much work. It's delicious, but it's a lot of work. So that's not what we're doing today. And not what I usually do. But if you do do that, you can actually, you're eating the whole fruit instead of just getting the flavor cooked out of it. So that's that. I have a bowl for the fruit, a bowl for the waste, which in this case is the seeds. And basically how you want to do this recipe is, or this recipe, how you want to process rose hips in general. Whether you take the seeds or not, out or not, um, just depends whether you're making jelly or um, a jam where you would want the flesh, but you need to cut them in half because that will release the, um, the flavors and nutrients. Like I think I mentioned earlier, uh, rose hips have piles of vitamin C. So you want that and you want to cut them all in half. I cut the little flower end off. It's not really that necessary, but I just do cut them in half, put them in a bowl. And uh, I will keep cutting here. You don't have to watch the whole thing, but again, with the magic of video, you get to come back in half a second and find the, whatever this is, couple hundred chopped up rose hips. Oh, but wait, I should point out this is, you will find some that are kind of rotten or bleted and you, well, I don't like the, the, the actual rotten parts in my food. So throw those away. I'm almost finished. And as I've been cutting these, oh, actually I wanted to say about that, hand cutting while I was doing this off video in the magic warp time zone or whatever you want to call that. Um, uh, we were talking about if there was a machine that could do this for us. And I said, I wouldn't want it. I mean, sure, it would make it a lot easier. And I'm sure I, I would probably process more rose hips, but I think cutting them by hand, like picking them by hand and also cutting each of these rose hips by hand is, whoops, such a, um, it's an important part of it. it. It just makes you feel like you've connected with the fruit and you know what they feel like and you actually see the inside. Like if I just threw them in a machine, maybe it would put a bunch of the black or rotten ones in. I don't know, anyway. Um, but the other thing that happened while I was cutting these was our puppy woke up. So I thought it's time she gets introduced on outdoor exploration. So hang on one sec. Clara, Clara, come here. Come. Good girl. Come on. Hi, there you are. You this is Clara. Clara, that's a camera. Oh, you're going to eat my hand. She is, I think, 10 weeks old now. And she's a Bernadoodle, so she will be much bigger than this very soon, I think. And that's it. So if you hear any puppy sounds, or perhaps you'll see her wandering in and out of some of our next videos, just me finger. That's Clara. Okay, there you go. All right, I have the water. It did just boil, but I'm bringing it back to a boil. And I will put all of these rose hips in it. And the premise here is we're just cooking the rose hips down. Um, well, hoping that, that flesh, that delicious 
orange part inside and just under the skin will come out into the water. And that's how we get the flavor. Coincidentally, um, I was wondering what is the fruit called if it's not a berry? Because I know rose hips, roses are related to apples, so they're the same type of fruit as an apple, but what's that called? So I looked it up. Apparently it's an accessory fruit. I'm so sorry. They seem like they should be called something much more exciting than that. But yeah, accessory fruit. And that has something to do with uh, the way it grows, which I can't remember right now, but it has to do with whether it grew from below the ovary or if the ovary became it or something like that. So anyway, apples and rose hips are accessory fruit. So if you look up close here, this is uh, just going to be boiling away here for a little while. And once again, I'm going to cut you out and bring you back when they've cooked down and we have some super flavorful, basically soup. And, and I'll finish up making it and show you then. I'm just making our curry at the same time. It's a wonderful squash curry made from our pumpkin that we grew and some coconut and cashews and lentils. But back to the, oh, let me turn this off and not burn it while I do this. Back to our rose hips, which you can see are getting beautiful here. I'll take them off the heat so they quiet down a bit, I guess. Um, basically, I have been mashing them um, a little in here, well, a lot actually, with this potato masher. Um, you don't want to put them in a blender or anything because then you would blend up all those hairs from the seeds. and. Uh, and we don't want all those. So basically I just mash them and I've been adding some water once in a while just to make sure it's still, you know, wet enough. We don't want it becoming a dry pulp. That would be bad. But uh, basically when I'm finished mashing all this, um, all the, the pulp, which, you know, it's pretty hard right now, but if it was frozen, like those couple of bletted ones, it would be soft. Um, the pulp is getting cooked out and cooked soft. So it's mushed into the water. So bas basically, if, uh, if I, well, I'll strain it in a minute, but you can see it's kind of clear here, a little bit clear because I've mushed a bunch of pulp into there. Actually, before I did this, before I've mashed it, that's when you would want to make jelly when it's clear. And in fact, you can just have this as tea. People, people like rosehip tea. I'm not a huge fan of rosehip tea personally. I like all the flavor in here. So I like the whole pulp and everything in. And, but basically for soup or a jam, this is what you can do. And now I'm going to strain it into this bowl here. Basically to get, it's the seeds we want out, but of course a lot of the, the skin and um, flesh will be taken out by this process too. But that's the sacrifice we make for not having to hand um, process all of these seeds out. Um, so I've squished out most of the water. Yeah, well, not water, but juice, I guess. And you can see it in the bowl. But, whoops, um, there's just a lot of pulp left in here. So um, I, in order to get that, because why waste pulp when we can use it? I'm going to throw it back in the pan here and add some water. Actually, I'll add from the tap because this is empty. Just enough to get uh, some more flavor out of it. Bring it back up to a boil 
and kind of squish it. It's pretty squished already, but uh, mix that all around and we're going to get more of the pulp out. You can see it. There are far more seeds to pulp than there were earlier, but we're aiming for way more seeds left than that and way less pulp. You can see it getting all pulpy as I as I mix the water in. And I'll strain it again. So this isn't a special recipe or anything. It's not even any particular method that I know of. It's just going on intuition, getting as much of the pulp cooked out of here as I can. See what's running out this time is is runnier than before. Still a little pulpy but not nearly as much as before so that might be the last time I put this through but I can see as I squish this through here it has a lot more seeds on the surface and that they're not in pulp you know they're just it's mostly seeds well not mostly but a lot more. Okay. And now I will just rinse my pan here because I don't want the seeds that are still stuck in the pan in my rose hip soup. And make the soup. So here we go. Look at that. It's so smooth and silky looking. Um, the only other ingredient this soup really needs is honey. Um, my mother-in-law uses cornstarch as well. Mmm, unpasteurized honey. Yum. Um, so it's a good amount of honey. I mean, what, if, if you taste the um, rose hip, come on off. I can't get it off. If you taste the rose hip juice, you'll notice it's sour, but not sweet, really very sweet at all. So you add quite a lot of honey and melt that in and that's your dessert soup. Um, you could also cook it down with sugar and make syrup. That's what I've done before to make winter snow cones. When you're at snowed in November it was like there was snow all over the rose hips and we just made snow cones in the yard. It was fabulous. Okay I've cooked this down and now it is just the way I like it, but I've decided to show you how it looks if you do put a starch in it. So I'll just pour off a little bit into a couple of bowls. Okay, that's one person's soup and another person's. All right, and if I want to thicken it up, I do is mix I don't know what this is and I'm using potato starch not cornstarch but my mother-in-law uses cornstarch I'm only putting about a tablespoon but you know all my measurements are random so don't listen to me on amounts I do everything by feel and see how it works out okay so you want to mix it with some water first as always with cornstarch or potato starch so it doesn't become all gloopy when it cooks. This is just cold water. Because when it cooks it thickens, right? So I pour in this cornstarch mixture and it'll become a bit whiter and a little bit thicker. Cornstarch, potato starch I mean. Pardon me, I keep saying the wrong thing. You can really see it thickening up now as the bubbles come up. So two people in my family are going to have the thicker version of the soup. Through video editing magic, it is now a couple minutes later and this is beautifully thick and lava-like as you can see. So I'm just going to pour it off. I mean pour it off, turn it off and uh, stir it all up and pour the next, oh, my pumpkin seeds are in my way, pour the next couple dessert bowls. This is way too hot to eat so we're going to have our curry first and then we'll have this for dessert. 
it has the perfect balance of sweet and sour and fresh and vibrant and never mind the perfect color seriously it's so gorgeous so um that is it i hope you find some rose hips in in your area wherever you are and i hope you harvest them and eat or make yourself rose hip tea rose hip syrup and snow cones when it snows um rose hip soup so many things rose hip jelly jam oh by the way you can make candy by just taking this what we just made here and adding in some melted either agar powder or gelatin and uh, you know thickening it up and then adding something to gel it and end up with rose hip jelly like i mean candy type rose hip jelly yum okay happy exploring <laughs>